Yo, what is up, Karma Nation? We are back at it again for another season of our Prop Party Pod. Sam could not join us this week. Uh, he's in the shitty state of Ohio with his girlfriend. So I'm here with my boy Ethan. Uh, we're back at it again with the WNBA squad. Uh, how's your day going today? Uh, day's going well so far. Um, well, somewhat. Golf props are doing okay so far today. Uh, my college football quarterback got hurt, so he hasn't returned yet. So we'll see if that happens. But overall, so far, a good start to the day. I'm ready for some football tomorrow, though. Bring on the big boys. Oh, yeah. Excited for another week of football. Uh, Chargers over here. <sighs> Boom. Texans. 1 0. Texans 0 oh, 1. Pretty yeah, embarrassing. Fire O'Brien. Yeah, maybe they'll uh, finish season 15 and 1. Uh, just keep no. People surprised. Nope, they're not. Uh, um, so today we will be breaking down our Sunday NFL prop slate at monkeyknifefight.online and prizepicks.online. Make sure to use the promo code KARMA to give yourself a nice little deposit bonus and a free play. And of course, as always, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on, on any of our live streams or podcasts. I think we have about five NFL podcasts uh, a week going on, so make sure you don't miss out on any of that. And then make sure to join our free Discord by going to chatdfs.com and join our free Bet Karma Discord by going to bettingkarma.com. Uh, we have some premium channels, but of course you can just hop in for free uh, by going to those URLs uh, and chat some sports with us. So we're going to start by breaking down one game each, and then together we're going to have a, uh, we're going to talk about one game. So which game are you looking at to start out? I am going to target the Colts and Vikings game. It, it, it has a over-under at 49 right this second, so it's the third or fourth highest on the slate. Um, that is the game I'll be targeting, and I'm mainly going to be targeting it because, especially on the Minnesota side, you have Dalvin Cook. And you have Thielen, and that's it. You know where the production is going to come from. So when I look at props, one, I look at the spread, see what game's close, what game has the highest over-unders. Um, and then I try and look and see, you know, we don't want to play a team like the Saints, right, where they have Michael Thomas, Kamara, Murray, uh, Cook, Sander. You know, have all these weapons that can score touchdowns or, you know, where they get production from. So – I'm targeting Minnesota for that reason. And then also the Colts, because what we saw last week, the Colts threw the ball about 46 times. That is a lot of throwing. And they were leading or tied for the first three quarters of the game. So Mac is hurt. So they're down to Hines and Taylor at running back. And with Taylor being a rookie, they aren't really running him much. He had nine rushing attempts last game. Hines had seven. I would expect probably Taylor to get 10 to 12 this game. Hines probably more around five. But what I'm looking at is the passing game for the Colts. So you see Rivers on Monkey Knife Fight at 260.5. I love the over at Rivers at 260.5. I personally think the Vikings win this game, and I think the Vikings will be leading at halftime too, mainly because of Dalvin Cook. Dalvin Cook – is a monster. I think, Joey, you would agree he's one of the best running backs in the league. Yep, always a top fantasy pick. I uh, slipped a little just because of the uh, contract worries, but uh, signed his contract, so he's good to go. I uh, expect a huge game from him uh, again yeah. today. So with my thinking right now, I think the Vikings are leading, and if the Vikings are leading, that means more rushing attempts for Cook in the second half. But the Colts have nothing – you know, their, their defense isn't scary at all. Jacksonville, who I think we can agree on, will be one of the worst football teams this year and probably one of the worst offenses. Their starting running back was James Robinson. Never heard of him until last week. We, no idea who he was. He had 16 rushing attempts for 62 yards. 62 rushing yards against Colts. What do you think Dallin Cook's going to do, who's a much better running back and one of the elite running backs in the league? So I am so I love the Cook over 74.5 rushing yards. And on the other side of the prop to two for two, you have Paris Campbell at 51.5 receiving yards. 
I love the over on Paris Campbell too. So if you look last game, two two receivers got most of the targets in that game. Campbell and Hilton, they both had nine targets in that game. Uh, Campbell caught six passes. Hilton caught, I think, four passes, four or five. But they both had plenty of yardage, 71 for Campbell, 53 for Hilton. If you watched that Green Bay-Minnesota game last week, Aaron Rodgers threw all over that secondary for Minnesota. That secondary for Minnesota was terrible. And I don't see how they fix that in one week. Especially with Rivers, who is one of the elite. Okay, I can't, I can't say elite quarterback because he's not up with the homes. But if they're going to let him throw the ball 46 times this Sunday, he's going over 300 yards. These receivers are going to hit easily over 50 yards receiving. So my free play I'm giving out today on the pod is Dallin Cook over 74.5 rushing yards and Paris Campbell over 51.5 receiving yards. Uh, and the other thing, too, that I love about the Colts passing attack, they ran three wide receiver sets 82% of the time last Sunday. So they are just looking to throw the ball each week. Whether or not they're tied, they have the lead, or if they're behind. If they're behind, they're throwing it every down. So <clears throat> that's kind of where my head is at on this Minnesota game. As my favorite cash play two for two again is Paris Campbell over 51.5 receiving yards and Dalvin Cook over 74.5 rushing yards. Um, and then don't be concerned about Dalvin Cook. I know a lot of people like to box score watch. Minnesota was chilling that entire game last week. Game script was not in Dalvin Cook's favor. Um, he got lucky and had two touchdowns and two two-point conversions, I believe. He had at least one two-point conversion. So his stats were a little – you know, pumped up because of that. Um, but don't be concerned. I don't think the Colts run away, you know, run away with this game like Green Bay did. I think this is a close game and I think Minnesota wins. And game script should be in Dalvin Cook's favor much more this Sunday. Would you agree with all that, Joey? Yeah, I love Paris Campbell and yeah, don't game log watch at all. There's so many factors that go into so much. Like on Thursday, I loved Odell. I loved Chubb. Both of them sucked, and of course, they're playing the Ravens. So, uh, and both of them had a huge game. So, I mean, game logs really mean nothing unless you're really yeah. digging into what they mean. Uh, because they have a bad game, why they have a bad game? Why does the running back have a bad game? Just because they're losing. If they're losing, of course, they're not going to get as many rushing attempts. They're more likely to be involved in the passing game, and they're just not going to run the ball at all. Yeah. Or if you're winning, you're not just not going to pass the game, ball as much. It's just as simple as that. So, well, yeah, that's to... the tricky thing. I mean, if you look at the box score, Green Bay only won by nine points in that game. But it was a much – they were winning by two, three touchdowns the entire game up until probably that middle of the fourth quarter. So, you know, just looking at the box score from last week, you see Dalvin Cook only 12 carries. Madison had eight carries. You know, if you didn't watch that game or didn't know much about it, you're game log watching. You're thinking, oh, split carry, you know, 50-50 running back split. I'm taking the under. But that is not the case. This is why you do not game log watch is because that is totally incorrect. Dalvin Cook is the main running back. I think he has over 100 rushing yards this week. They're just going to pound the rock to him, especially because Cousins is a very bad quarterback, I think. Um, so love the Dalvin Cook over rushing yards. Yeah, and then to touch on Campbell, uh, Green Bay destroyed them in the slots, and Paris Campbell ran 95% of their, his snaps in the slots. Uh, he had nine tar – all his targets came uh, in the slot as well. So, And then we had uh, – where was he? Devontae Adams had six catches in the slots. Uh, only ran 40% of his – time. Uh, sorry, 23% of his snaps in the slot, but you also had Lazard uh, – but he had uh, three catches in the slot as well for 59 yards. So they they allowed a lot of slot production. Uh, so you're getting Campbell in the slot, kind of Keenan Allen's role from last year. And, you know, Rivers loves his slot receivers. You know, he loves his, um, loves his running, his back running backs as well. I think they had a 37% target rate at the running back position too. So yeah, we saw Eckler only had one catch last week. And that's what happens when you don't have Rivers as your quarterback. So yeah, it's going to be a lot of volume. I will say, Joey, um, looking at the 
where is it? The six for six. I don't know if you're you have the game up or not, but if you look yeah. at the six, for six stats uh, or fantasy points. Uh, stats. We're looking at the stats six for six. You know, I already said I love Rivers over two sixty point five. I love Paris Campbell over fifty one point five. I like T Y Hilton over sixty seven point five. Uh, Hilton can easily break one anytime. Jonathan Taylor at seventy five point five rushing yards. He only had nine rushing attempts last week. Do you really think, Joey, he's going to get 15, 20 attempts this week? You know, he's a rookie. I think he stays under 15 again this week. I like the under there on Jonathan Taylor rushing yards. Yeah, unless they make some, miss some coach speak. Yeah, he should stay under. Mac only played 11 snaps, so it's not like he had a big influence on no. it. There's more Hines taking up a lot of work. But passing game. Yeah, so I'll probably go under on his rushing yards, uh, but if you have a sports book, his over on receptions is probably looking pretty good. Uh, but yeah, those I love those, and then the Vikings are a little tougher, but we'll probably look into that. Uh, we'll talk about it in our Discord uh, to yeah. give you some more leans on that. Uh, but just make sure you hop into the Discord. Uh, that wouldn't be in the free section. Uh, you'd have to get the NFL package, which is only $15 a week, which you get lineups and props, which... Really good deal. You're basically getting paying seven dollars for lineups and seven dollars for props, basically. So yeah. definitely a good deal, especially if you play more than like ten dollars on the prop. There's no we give out like six or seven props per uh, per Sunday, and then a couple couple each primetime slate. So it's definitely you're getting ten to twelve props a week. So and definitely good value. Like that, last week you profited. You're already in the plus money. So we have fifteen, at least fifteen more weeks of this. Hopefully. I had uh, two out of three of my full game props last week, so yeah, at we had that's uh, pretty good there. Uh, if you're only playing ten dollars a prop, that's ten dollars right there profit, uh, or actually forty dollars profit right there at ten dollars a prop. So yeah, uh, well, there. yeah. So that's my favorite game, Jerry. What about you? I know, I know you have a game you're, you're targeting. Yeah, um, I'm going against my favorite team here. Uh, we got Ooh. the Chargers game. Uh, I don't like to be a homer at all when I do props. Uh, I know my team. I know we're going to lose this game. It's Kansas City versus L.A. Like, There's not much you can do about that. We saw what they did against the Texans. Uh, Chargers have a better defense. Uh, but it is an 8.5 point spread. Uh, the over-under is 47.5. Uh, I expect the Chargers to stay under their team total, and the Chiefs will hover over that over um, for my leans. But... Yeah, so looking into it, uh, we got Mahomes at 305. I love his under, uh, but I love his over on fantasy points. He's going to score the touchdowns, but he never gets yards against the Chargers. He's averaging only 213 yards in four games against the Chargers. That's just crazy. Uh, his next lowest is 250, and he sees over 300 against multiple, multiple teams. Uh so we saw him get last year. Uh, I think that, yeah, this is last year. He got where is it? Oops. He got under two hundred in both games last year. He got one seventy four and one eighty two. I don't like yeah. the game log watch, but that was way lower than every other team except for Oakland, uh, where he got one seventy five. So those division games have been tripping him up. I wonder. For sure. Andre, I wonder if um, I, I, and I don't know if you remember the game from last year or not, since you're the homer. Do you happen to know if maybe the Chargers tried to just run the ball against the Chiefs last year? You know, control the ball, control the ball, um, you know, limit Mahomes' passing attempts? Not really. Uh, because that is crazy low for Mahomes. Yeah, our defense is just good. The Rivers were throwing interceptions. They are getting a lot of short fields. Our special team sucks. And uh, on punts, I saw them get some short fields a lot. Um but yeah, we only had a hundred rushing yards, forty-five, fifty and fifty for Eckler and Gordon, and then we had sixty-nine for Gordon and twenty-five for Eckler. The game after, uh, the games are high scoring. Just Rivers just threw a lot of interceptions. He had four interceptions and two interceptions, so that might have played a role. But I love his over on fantasy points just because he always gets those touchdowns. Uh, he but those yards, just, our defense knows how to play them. And our rush defense sucks, which is why I love 
going over on Clyde and under on Mahomes for uh, rush. Uh, Mahomes passing yards under I love and Clyde over rushing yards I love. Uh, he doesn't pop up on a three for four, uh, which I love those three for fours. I wish I could get a. I don't know why. Oh, I guess because we need one charger in that three for four, just because they dominate everything. Uh, so you can't have all chiefs. But, yeah, Clyde over 75. Uh, I think on books you get him at 70, but I still love the 75. He destroyed the Texans last week. Game script's going to be in his favor. It's eight and a half, but they'll definitely be leading by two touchdowns for the majority of the game. Tyrod can't run this offense. They're not going to run any dump-offs to Eckler. Even though they want to get him touches, they said, they're just not going to run dump-offs, which is part of it's our best offense. So I'm just... I'm just nervous for the Chargers. This, we barely beat the Cincinnati. We put up 16 points against Cincinnati. <laughs> We're probably going to put up two touchdowns against the Chiefs. Two touchdowns against the Chiefs doesn't win win any Ooh, games. What, what's the score prediction for this game, Joey? Uh, 14 points for the Chargers and 28 to 35 points for the Chiefs. Okay. Okay, so two or three touchdown score leads when you yeah, have Yeah. Um, I think... I think it's going to be like 7-21 to 21 in the first half. So hopefully we get some second half props in this game. But Yeah. Uh, what, what do you think of Hunter or Henry at tight end? Uh, I love him today. That was the free prop I'm going to be giving out today. Yeah. Clyde Edwards-Hilaire over 75 rushing yards. And then Hunter Henry over 45 receptions. Uh, Chiefs can't guard tight ends. And that seemed like the only offense we were getting last week. Uh, Henry had eight targets. Uh, expecting eight to turn targets again. Today, uh, Chiefs have been struggling against the tight ends. Uh, we didn't see much of the Texans at tight end, but that's just because the Texans really have no names at their tight ends and rather would use the wide receivers or run it with David Johnson when they're down three touchdowns. So um, You never know what Bill O'Brien's doing, so you can't really base it off of that production. He's probably trading for a running back right now as we speak. Yeah, run those two running back sets. Good to go. Well, you know, Duke got hurt, so they're, they're running, running back. You can't lose those games. Hey, well, Duke, Duke got hurt, so we're in the market for a running back. <laughs> yeah, paying, just pay your running backs 20 to $25 million a year. Grab both two running backs, and of course you're going to do well. Um, <laughs> right? Yeah, if you get uh, if your running back scores over 100, uh, gets over 100 rushing yards, you probably have a good good record there, but yeah. he doesn't realize game script. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, I love love the overs on both uh, Clyde and Henry. Henry's a little closer. I wish he was 3.5. I'd love that prop a ton if he was 3.5. But 4.5 is exactly where he should be. Uh, I should get five to six catches today or tomorrow. Uh, so that's the prop I love the most. Game script's going to be in favor for both of those. Uh, I expect the Chargers to have to pass a lot in the second half. Uh, Eckler will probably only get like 10, 10 to 12 carries. Hopefully he gets a couple catches. Uh, I know we're not going to get dump off, so hopefully they run a couple couple routes for him at least uh, to get anything going in this offense. My only concern is we just won't be able to get anything going, uh, and Henry just won't have a good game. But I love... Favorite play on the board is Clyde edwards Lair over 75. I know you can mix and match those in the uh, in the star shootout if you want to look at it a little more. Uh, but definitely, definitely love the prop for these overs here too. Uh, deciding for the uh, passing prop, I love the under on Mahomes. So Tyrod's just a little trickier. Uh, game script should tell him to go over, but I don't trust that at all. Yeah. So leaning yeah. over on Mahomes and under on Tyrod, but probably won't end up touching that. Uh, but that's probably where I'm leaning, and for fantasy points, I'm leaning the over on Mahomes. It's kind of a little natural hedge. Uh, he's at 22.5, and he, he'll probably have three touchdowns, so that's only... He only really needs 250 yards to go over there, or if he gets a little more rushing yards. Uh, I don't expect a... Maybe one or two... Maybe one interception. Doubt two interceptions, so... Really only yeah. needs 250 yards and three touchdowns to go over. And that's extremely doable for him in this matchup. Uh, I love the over on Clyde's fantasy points, too. He'll be involved in the passing game. I think his prop on books is 90 all-purpose yards. Um, so Or scrimmage yards. I get those two mixed up way too much. But rushing and receiving yards at 90. So that's 9. Uh, you add three catches, that gets you to 12, and he's going to score a touchdown. Uh, he'll yeah. probably get over 100. He probably don't, won't need a touchdown to go over this mark. He'll probably have 100 rushing yards and... 
30 to 40 passing yards and 3 to 4 catches, so that'll put him right at 16, uh, 16 to 17. So I'm expecting 20, 20 plus fantasy points for him to, tomorrow. Uh, but I'll probably lean under on Eckler as well, just because he's just not involved in the passing game enough. And dump offs were his bread and butter last year, which I don't know why we're not doing this year. And the coach yeah, even came out and said we're not doing it this year. So I don't <laughs> expect much from him. You think your coach gets the boot after this year, or halfway through? Uh, depends what happens with the because it's a, we got a rookie quarterback, so I'm not sure what's gonna happen. I think he's like the fourth highest odds to get booted. Be the Dude, first coach to boot. So bad against the Bengals, man. <laughs> it's why, the, the why Browns. Don't get Eckler involved beats me. Like, how are you gonna let the Browns go off and not the Chargers? Like, come on. Yeah. Uh, but looking at this six for six, it probably if you look at the rapid fire, most likely there's some good, good odds here. Chargers can't guard tight ends, so I'll probably lean Kelsey over um, Tyreek. And the I haven't pulled up the rapid fire, but it's usually just based off of the six for six. Uh, so one more free pay if you want. I won't give it out completely, but uh, you can tell just based off of leans. Tight ends suck against the Chargers, uh, and I expect Tyreek Hill to be limited today. Uh, just because our three cornerbacks are all amazing. Uh, so we should be able to contain Hill pretty easily. Uh, but it's going to be a Clyde and Kelsey game. So those two rapid fires are really nice. Uh, and I'll let you decide on the Mahomes part. Uh, I told you I like the over on uh, fantasy points. But you can still end up going under if uh, Clyde gets a touchdown. So... It's going to be a tough choice there. Game script's going to be on Tyrod's side for sure. Uh, and we know the Chiefs give up a lot of... The Chiefs don't have the best defense, uh, but you get behind against them, you're more likely to throw interceptions. So I might be leaning Mahomes over Tyrod. Um, so just banking on a cle- Chiefs slaughter. And if I'm wrong, the Chargers end up winning. So it's a win-win situation for me. Um, but yeah, there's a couple good ones. And the 5 for 5 rapid fire is going to be good. I'll drop that under Discord. Uh... Of course, Sammy Watkins only does well on week one, so. Yeah, I, I love those plays, Joey. That's a great game. Yeah, and then so we can move on to one last game tonight, and then we'll move to uh, prize picks. Uh, the comb- What was this, the game we are going to do? Panthers, I believe? Uh, yeah, we are going to target yeah. Carolina and Tampa, I think. Um, yeah, one of the higher over-unders on the slate. I think one thing, I'll kind of start us off here. Godwin's out, Correct. Uh, last I saw, he was doubtful yesterday. I haven't checked today, but doubtful probably not doubtful. playing though. So, now um, so, so, um, just quick analysis of this: Tampa, <laughs> they looked really bad against the Saints last week. Um, uh, I don't think they'll have any issues with Carolina. Though, with that being said, Carolina struggled with Las Vegas. God feels weird saying Las Vegas and not Oakland. Yeah. Um, but Carolina's best player is also everybody knows CMC. Christian McCaffrey. Tampa has one of the best run defenses in the league. They had it last year. Their rush defense against the Saints were amazing. Camaro really didn't do anything on the ground. Murray didn't do much either. Um, Game strict will not be in Carolina's favor either. Bridgewater's going to have to pass a lot. And I personally don't think Bridgewater is a good quarterback at all. So I think Tampa Bay blows out Carolina. But with that being said, so last week, Christian McCaffrey didn't get a ton of targets through the air. I And I don't know why. It's the same thing with Eckler. Why last year was Eckler so involved through the air? Same with Christian McCaffrey, but week one, we saw both not heavily involved. I don't know. Yeah, uh, quarterback change on both spots, so it kind yeah. of messes up. I think Kyle Allen was the one who was really given uh, – CMC the most work, uh, so we, we we definitely miss him. But yeah, I still think Christian McCaffrey should see some volume. Uh, I I'm leaning as under on rushing yards at 72. We saw Tampa Bay all last year and New Orleans, both of them. It's gonna be a tough division for uh, CMC if he's not gonna get in the passing game. Both of them are amazing against the uh, amazing against the run. Tampa Bay is not so good against the pass, um, but their pass rush and their uh, run stoppers were amazing last year, and we saw it again this year against the Saints. So I'm expecting a rough game for CMC and the running, rushing yards. He's at a uh, 72 and a half. I'll probably lean under on him there. Uh, not sure exactly what I'm gonna do there. I'll probably drop that in Discord. But I'm leaning 
is um, over on fantasy points. A 21 and a half is really yeah. nice. I'm cool with he's, that. He's 24 on prize picks, so if you're looking for fantasy points um, on Christian McCaffrey, unless you really hate Tom Brady, it's fantasy points. Um, I love the over at 21 and a half. He should be involved enough to get five or six catches. I mean, he was second in the league in receptions last year as a running back. Uh, I I mean, I have to assume like they'll get it done this week and give him at I, least five or six catches. Uh, I think for him it's going to come down to does he catch that touchdown or get that touchdown. He always does. He always does. Yep. So so you have to t- you can never feel good about the under on Christian McCaffrey, but I would say with his yards running, yards catching, ca- you know, receptions, I would say he's going to be somewhere between 18 and 20. So he's, I think he's going to need that touchdown to go over that 21.5, but I do think he gets it. Yeah, so he did still run around on 85% of the snaps, uh, passing downs. So he still is evolved enough. I think it's just a bad variance game that I think people are going to be down on him this week in fantasy too just because he only had four, catch- four targets for three catches. Yeah. I do like the bounce back. Don't like the bounce back in the rushing game, but I do love the bounce back in the passing game. And last year, you're getting a wide receiver one with the RB one uh, production. So yeah. I think you get the RB two or three production and then the wide receiver one production this week. Um, but yeah. all touchdown fantasy points are a lot touchdown depends. So they're a little tougher. Um, but Christian McCaffrey, I can never go under on Christian McCaffrey. Uh, yeah, I, I agree he was with consistently. You over 30 points and I still was going over on him last year um, you get him on a 10 point discount 12, 13 point discount compared to last year that we consistently saw him which is two touchdowns uh, or six catches and 60 yards but I'm expecting like a 65 to 70 rushing yard game uh, which will get him 6 to 7 points a touchdown a 2 will put him up at 12 to 18 and then uh Probably six catches for 60 yards. I'm expecting that bounce back. Uh, yeah, so that's another 12 too. points. I'm expecting over 24. Prize picks a little tougher, but I love the over at 21 and a half. I can't miss out on that. That's one of those you look back when Christian McCaffrey gets 30 points tomorrow. Like, why did I not do that? Just like we did last last night on uh, the Zacks for pa- pitching props. Uh, yeah. Both of those look so good. Uh, Greg and Gallon, uh, but we just didn't pull the trigger. Uh, yeah. This is one of those you're going to look back like, oh, I should have pulled the trigger. Um, and they, his receptions are in the 4 for 5 uh, stats-wise, F5.5 receptions. Uh, so I'll probably be leaning over on that uh, just because I'm not going to go under on him. I'll, leave, I'll never go under except for like something with rushing yards. Uh, but he can he, still break a 60, 70-yard rushing touchdown like we've seen in yeah. the past. So you, know, you know who I'm probably going to go under on? Who? Brady. 280, yeah, 280.5 passing. I think his fantasy is 19.5. I love the under on Brady. Yeah, Brady actually started at 290 early in the week, so people are pounding the under. Uh, he, he did not look good at all against the Saints. Uh, new offense, though, so I understand. But Chris Godwin probably is not playing this game. Yeah. I And Mike Evans... <laughs> I know he's healthy this week. Man, he didn't look good either last week. I don't think he's fully healthy. I mean, they might say he's fully healthy, but if you have a hamstring injury and last week he was barely playing, he was probably just a decoy and he got that lucky touchdown. But yeah. hamstrings take a while. That's why I'm glad Kenny Dolliday is just sitting out a couple games. Uh, I'm on my yeah. fantasy team. Like, rest that hamstring up so you're good. Yeah. In a couple of weeks, he's Mike Evans is probably not going to be healthy for weeks. Um, we're probably going to see him limited all season, maybe if they're just going to force him out. Uh, especially tall receivers, the bigger the muscle, the bigger the tendon, the harder the recovery is. Uh, we see with basketball players, the ACLs they take much longer just because they're taller. Um, hamstring, the larger the muscle. I don't know how bad the injury was, but. It's going to be tough to recover for something like that. Um, so I think he's going to be limited a couple more games. Carolina, awful defense. Awful, awful defense. That's Ronald something Jones, different. baby. Ronald Jimmy Jones on that four for five. I was talking about 65 rushing yards. 67 oh. now. I mean, sorry, 67 rushing yards. Yeah. 13 and a half uh, points. I'll touch on that on prize picks. That's one of my plays I like. Uh, but 
Yeah, I love Ronald Jones. We saw what Josh Jacobs did. We saw running backs last year just dominate him. Them. And one thing, and Joey, I know you. Po- I don't think you watched the game because you were out of town at the beach last weekend. But the Bucs. North Carolina, so I watched that game. Okay. Well, yeah. the Bucks gave Jones the rock. I mean, they, they told him, take it and run. So, and, and that's, I think, one thing you have to worry about Brady with his age is you don't want him to get tired early. And he shouldn't be tired by game two. But you don't want him throwing 35, 40 times a game. I don't yeah. think. And they gave and, Ronald Jones a neutral game script. They were like, I think it was 35% passing and 65% uh, rushing. So they're really, yeah. really giving Ronald Jones the rock. And Fournette, nine snaps think, last week. Yeah. Uh, Fournette's, I think, is going to be more of a change. You know, I think it's going to be more blocking, passing downs. Um, I remember seeing him out there some. But I love Ronald Jones this week. Uh, rushing against Carolina, game streak will be in his favor. I think. And I even think Fournette will have a big game too. I think both of them will combine for close to 200 yards rushing. Wow, bold, that's my bold call. Today. Um, I could see them easily combining for that. Um, well, more. I think it's more more likely to combine for 30 fantasy points just because I feel like the touchdowns are going to be there. Touchdowns. Carolina gives a lot of rushing touchdowns. We saw it. All last year, I targeted them in the running game. Last night, I mean, last week, we saw Josh Jacobs. He was pretty low on the fantasy. I was surprised. But Josh Jacobs, like, 33 fantasy points, three touchdowns. Yeah, guy had a monster game. I am expect. I mean, Ronald Jones just has an awful stigma to him. Like, he's never, never been able to get the workhorse load. But there's always been another running back. We saw Fournette sign in the offseason, and we just assumed he would take the job. But... Ronald well, Jones was named the starter from Arians before the season started, and if he keeps running this well and he's got a good matchup today, I mean, he might just well, uh, take it over. And I think one thing that helps Jones out this year is Brady's the quarterback. You have On defense, you have to respect the passing game. You know, one thing that you saw um, Las Vegas did against Carolina is they were trying to stop Jacobs, and they couldn't. Let, let's, not, let's not try and pretend like that Las Vegas passing game is – Super elite because it's definitely not elite. Uh, that Buccaneers passing game, you know, you got Mike Evans, you got Gronkowski, you got OJ Howard, and don't forget about Scotty Miller coming in clutch last week. Yeah. But the Tampa can throw the ball too, so you can't stack the box against Ronald Jones. Carolina couldn't stop Jacobs while stacking the box. I don't see them stopping the run at all this week. So give me Jones all day long. Love the over. Fantasy, yards, everything. Let's go. Yeah, I love that. Um, and, yeah, so I looked it up. It was uh, 11 attempts uh, in neutral game script and then for passing and 17 rushes in neutral game script for uh, for Tampa Bay. So even if they're not winning uh, by that much, they're still going to give uh, Jones a lot of carries. And Tom Brady can read a defense, so expect. Yeah. Even if they're looking to pass, they'll still uh, – Run a bunch of audibles for him. Uh, so, yeah, love those plays. Uh, I guess we can move to prizepicks.online next, uh, unless you have anything else for that game. I have nothing else for that game. We can move on. All right, let's see what we got here. There's one game that I do want to comment, though, Joey. There is one There's one game that we did not touch on on purpose, and, to, and I think you and I both can agree there's some really good props in that game. We're saving that for Discord. So, like we said, get in Discord, get in our premium NFL channels, play some fantasy. I know Ben and Bales killed it first week. Um, Joey and I got the props for NFL. We did. We killed it too the first week. Uh, it's cheap. It's well worth your money. You'll make your money back within one week. So get in there, and we will talk about that game in Discord. Yeah, I almost had a takedown last week on my Fanduel line as well. Um, just I don't. Uh, the I, had, best. <laughs> I had Edwards uh, who screwed it up uh, for the Raiders. Yeah. I expect a little more from him, but he was the only one. I had Jacobs. I did. Uh, I stacked those running backs: Jacobs, uh, McCaffrey, and then someone else who did amazing. Can't remember, but yeah. Um, you get play. You get lineups and props. It's a great deal. Um, Heck yeah, it is. You don't even have to bet that much. Like we bet like fifty, hundred dollars a prop. Uh, but even people who bet five, ten dollars a prop still, still can see profitable weeks. Uh, fifteen dollars. It's just really, it's not that bad. 
Uh, and there's three uh, three days a week of uh, football, so sure definitely right. get your money's worth. Kidding. <laughs> if there wasn't college football, we'd have it four times a week. Yeah, we could have they were going to play on Saturday if there was no college football. Yeah, that would have been so nice. Uh, get Sunday night, uh, Thursday night football, Saturday night football, and Monday night football. That would have been amazing. What would you have done with yourself? I would have loved it. But <laughs> I know you did. Um, so, I have a favorite play on the board. Well, somewhat favorite. It's risky. Not really, but. Um, Allen Robinson, Joey. Allen Robinson. Wow. 15.5. Uh, playing the Giants. You saw what the Steelers did against the Giants. They passed all over them. Um, I know it's Trubisky. He didn't play terrible. Robinson led the team in targets last week. He had five catches for 74 yards. He's unhappy. He's pissed off. There are rumors, though, he could be getting his contract that he's wanted before kickoff. That's kind of what the goal is, kind of what they're doing. You know, they're trying to get accomplished. I don't hate Allen Robinson over. Uh, he's the number one receiver. But, again, I know it's Trubinsky. I know it's – but he's yes. probably one of my top three favorite plays. Interesting stat from that, to build onto that. Trubitsky had the second most time in the pocket because, yeah, their uh, O-line played great, but Lions O-line sucked, and I think who, uh, I think only ben, Big Ben had as much uh, time in the pocket as him. I think Giant, the well, Giants' defense is awful. Yeah, so you got Mitch getting so much time, and then you got Big Ben getting so much time, and Mitch is getting the Big Ben treatment next week, I mean this week, so it's a perfect time uh Perfect time the to go only, right back the only to Mitch. thing I worry about is if he doesn't get that touchdown or those targets early, game script probably won't be in his favor. I mean, Giants probably can keep it close, but I mean, Giants are really bad this year. But um, yeah. possibly, you know, they run the ball a little bit more second half. I know they love to run it with Montgomery and uh, Cohen, but fifteen point five for Allen. If he gets that touchdown, he's going over for sure. Um, yeah, definitely. Because he's guaranteed for probably five. Or, you know, five to seven catches a game, give or take. So targets will be t around 10. So I like Allen Robinson over. Yeah. Um, I wasn't uh, on him, but, yeah, he's definitely uh, an interesting play for sure. Um, yeah, he's a great wide receiver. just doesn't I get love him. Yeah, he is Trubisky. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he just – Hasn't had the quarterbacks at all. Uh, I expect Nick Foles to play this year. They pay him so much, but uh, that lit a fire under Trubisky to uh, play it to his uh, to his talent that he was drafted number two for. Then that's that's just as good. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, don't mind that play at all. Let's see. Uh, let's see who we can pair him with. Uh, I have a couple plays that I'm gonna drop in Discord uh, yeah. that I like most. Uh, but I did mention. Same with Tampa Bay. Uh, Ronald Jones over 13.5 fantasy Love points. Uh, just building off of the monkey knife fight we talked about, uh, Carolina cannot guard uh, running backs to save their life. Uh, yeah. Kind of in the basketball ling lingo there, guarding. Uh, but, I love it. Yeah, uh, I don't expect uh, a ton of passing from Brady. I could see 20 attempts, 20, 25 attempts. Uh, if Tampa Bay gets to an early lead, uh, just watch Ronald Jones rush for 80, 90 rushing yards. Uh, and I expect at least one touchdown from him, maybe even two. Uh, you can go to your bookie and bet uh, bet that two touchdown probably for some some amazing value. But, yeah, I love Ronald Jones over 13 and a half. Uh, so you can get a nice two for two. You can flex that or power that. Flex, I'm starting to power. I used to flex all my two for twos, but they raised the multiplier up to three three X, so... I started powering them again. The nice thing about the flex is normally you hit at least one, so you get half your money back. I think I was hitting 80, 80 to 90% and at the time I at least got one. Um, yeah, so that's um, why I always flexed. But, yeah, uh, I gave out two prize picks plays last week. Uh, I always do a three for three. I don't know why I do because I love that 5X payout. But um, if you would have flexed both three for three of my plays last week, they both hit. So starting off the year strong with prize picks, uh, um, but, I mean, we just touched on the position players. I, I, I looked at the quarterbacks. There were a couple quarterbacks I love on this board. Um, and I'll tell you something that I had success with last week, Joey. Kickers. 
Believe it or not, kickers. Wow. Uh, yeah. I got I, I played two kickers last week on Price Picks, and I hit both of them with ease. So uh, don't sleep on these kickers. I know we I know in fantasy we hate kickers, we hate defenses, but these kickers might be free money on Price Picks. So something to look at and just you know we'll discuss in Discord. But um, kickers, man, I had some success last week with them. Yeah, those high scoring games, those kickers get involved. So yeah, I mean, see it just easily going over, Badgley easily going over. Um, yeah, I mean, the the way the scoring set up for a price pick is, you know, you kick a forty to forty nine yard field goal, that's four points right there. Kick yeah. two, you know, you're, you know, score two touchdowns, kick two field goals, you're probably going over. It's those misses that really kill you, right? Um, uh, well, that, there's no negative points if you miss oh, a kick. Got rid of that. Uh, I think, I mean, I need to look, but, uh, I mean, so here's the funny thing, Joey, both my kickers I picked last week missed their extra point. <laughs> How did I do that? I don't know. Uh, it was, Goskowski. it was the kicker for, uh, Pittsburgh Boswell. He missed his extra point, And then the Atlanta kicker missed his extra point. How I did that. I don't know, but both still went over with it. Uh, but I don't remember losing any, uh, points for those miss extra points so field goals could be different i i would be surprised if they were i'm, I'm looking real quick um uh, yeah so no no that's defensive scoring i guess they don't have kicking up yeah i saw a lot i remember seeing it last year i don't know why they don't have it up that's weird uh but i assume it's the normal normal like well, I guess FanDuel and DK don't have it up anymore. Uh, but it's usually like three. It goes by yards, like three for the 30s, four for the 40s, yeah. four for the 50s. And then some play, I guess we're going to have to message them and double check. But I don't know why they don't have it up. That's weird. Um, but, really yeah. weird. Um, oh, here we go, kickers. Uh, yeah, no, no, yeah, no negative points for missed field goals or extra points. So don't worry about it. All right, there we go. Yeah, so that makes it even easier. Um, so that's just completely random. You have no idea when they're going to miss. And when they do that 60-yard field goal at the end of half, like to try yeah. for something, it doesn't screw you either. So. Yeah. But the point, the point Joey and I are trying to make with price pick and the kickers are, I don't know any other site that has kickers for fantasy. Look at, look at see what kickers they have on the board. Go look at over over under totals. Target the games that are 50, for, you know, high 40s, low 50, you know, the higher scoring games. Target those kickers because they're probably going to go over. Yeah, because if we get a – the only reason you would lose that um, is if either they miss those field goals or all they do they is get, scoring touchdowns. Um, which rarely happens. I felt like I mean I, I'd have to do the research on it, but I feel like a kicker gets at least one majority of the kickers get at least one field goal a week. Yeah, and those high scoring games definitely. Uh, like I'm probably gonna go like Tucker over because Baltimore is just gonna roll over everyone and at least get in the field goal range. It's Houston, like they're gonna yeah, unless sucked. they just score every single possession, which I guess they could. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, one th one thing you could target is teams that move the ball easily but struggle in the red zone. That's the teams you want to target. Yeah, especially check the defensive red zone uh, yep. stats as well because if they're stopping people, I know Pittsburgh. I mean, we could see some from Denver, uh, but Denver kicker is not on the board. But uh, Pittsburgh, I'm sure Denver is going to struggle in the red zone. Uh, young, young, uh, young quarterback. So we can see two kicks from a uh, Denver kicker, but of course they don't have it up. They have Boswell, but not uh, McManus. So and those yeah. defenses, there's some good edge. defenses. A little random, um, but you have the Jets without Crowder um, and no Le'Veon. So San Francisco is a little high, but uh, we could definitely see a pick six or some interceptions at least uh, yeah. to give you that opportunity. Uh, Bears defense, if Saquon can't get anything going, Bills defense as well. They're they're high, but they could all go over easily. Um, so you can look at those. You can even do like a defensive stack. Um, yeah. I don't uh, know. You probably can't stack defense against quarterback most likely. Um, yeah. They probably won't Joey, let you go under on a quarterback and over on the defense. Let's do something a little different this year than last year. Let, let's give me, give me your bold fantasy player, and let's go with 
position player, not quarterback, okay? Which player playing this week, and we didn't talk about this uh, before Discord, so you, I'm throwing you for a loop here. Which player this week do you think scores the most fancy points out of everybody? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, uh-huh. So um, here's my bull call, Ronald Jones. I think he rushes for 100 yards. I think he gets two touchdowns, maybe even three. I think he scores 25 fancy points, 28. Um, that's kind of my favorite bull call of the week is I love Ronald Jones. So I was going to say that too, but I just don't think he's going to score enough just because Christian McCaffrey is probably going to get the same exact thing with just no no issue whatsoever. Um, but I think – ooh. Maybe Derrick Henry. Um, Ooh. He's minus 200 to score a touchdown on books, and he's 118 on DraftKings for fantasy uh, for rushing yards. So, like, if he does what he's supposed to do, that's right there. 100 no yards and a touchdown, 16 points right there. Um, yeah. I expect a couple catches, give him, like, one or two, uh, just because I think Evans is still out. And once yeah. Evans comes back, he's going to hurt uh, – Heard Henry's uh, passing game, but Henry is involved in the passing game enough to get a couple catches. Um, and, and no A.J. Brown this week. No A.J. Brown. I'm expecting – I mean, he could easily get two, three touchdowns. It's Jacksonville. Um, we didn't see the Colts run on just because it's the Colts. But uh, uh, he could take a – I saw last year in the playoff games, it annoyed me because he got a uh, screen pass for like a 70-yard touchdown or like – like, why don't they run screen passes more for him? Like, you get Henry out in the open field, who's going to tackle him? Like, yeah. he can run through four defensive linemen and still get six yards, uh, even if he gets touched at the line of scrimmage. So, I don't get why they don't run. Like, just run two screen passes for him a game. That's all you need. Um, so, maybe without A.J. Brown, if they can't get Corey Davis going. Uh, we saw him have a pretty good game last week. But uh, if Corey Davis doesn't get going, Henry's just going to need at least 30 carries. Uh, get him five yards per carry. Uh, that's 150 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, that's 27 points right there. And if he gets two catches, that's two more points. That's 29. And then just maybe gets 30 yards out of that. Uh, that's over 30 points right there. Uh, so not a huge bull call, but still, I think Henry, uh, he's, what is he, the third highest projected player on the prize picks board, but uh, yeah, I think he's going to be the number one running back, this number one player this week. All right, I like it. I, I can see it happening, so I like it. All right, so. I got, I got nothing else on prize picks. I got nothing else either. Just enjoy the weekend. Have a pretty fun Sunday. Uh, watch your favorite team win, hopefully. Uh, I know I'm not going to be watching my favorite team win. And, uh, yeah, Ethan's not going to watch his favorite team win. We're playing the two best teams in the AFC. So. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, our fan- hopefully we make some money because our teams aren't winning. <laughs> so. Yeah. All right. We will- we'll see you see next you week. week. Hopefully, Sam will be with us. Oh, please let Sam be with us. Yeah. All right. See ya. See ya.